Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Welcome to Aerial One Digital Studios, where today we'll be unboxing the Zenmuse X5, uh, which is DJI's latest camera upgrade for the Inspire One. And uh, today we'll be showing you how to install it, mount it, and uh, we'll get to see it in action. So, without further ado, here we've got the X5 and in the box. We've got instruction manuals, both in Chinese and in English. And then there she is, the beauty herself. Look at that. It's quite sleek, actually. It's a nice design, rather heavy. Uh, I'd say it's twice the weight of the, at least, of the previous witch might account for a slightly lessened flight time, but we know that she can handle it, it is made for it. This is not the R version, but they mount exactly the same. We've got two ports here. One is for USB and one is for our memory card. Let's get out of there. Oh, there Okay, so that is the camera and the recommended anti-vibration board is here. It looks like this, similar port. So we have that, we have leg extenders. And last but not least, we have our screws and fixtures. Should be three bits and a couple extra screws. So now that we're familiar with all the pieces involved, uh, we go to step two, which is dismounting the current uh, gimbal mounting plate and installing the new one. So firstly, we have to disconnect uh, these rubber connections, which I believe are only connected by rubber, but we have to be careful not to pull too hard because those wires underneath, uh, we need to keep them and not sever them. Okay, so, got that done. And now to disconnect the X3 um, mounting board here. See there are two wires going in, as uh, the gimbal wires going in, and there are actually two little uh, interlocking teeth that are holding these two in place so they don't lodge, dislodge themselves. You have to actually push in to get it to come out. And I've done a few of these, so the first time was a little, a little dangerous. I was pulling uh, a little bit too hard. But there you see the, the teeth in the second one, and there you have it. Uh, both of them are disconnected. Okay. That's gonna go on just like that. And there's a, an individual plate that you know wobbles against these anti-vibration uh, rubber parts. There's a slightly smaller one, a slightly larger one. Uh, you got to make sure that that grip goes. Um, sorry, the, the interlocking goes facing forward. As you can see, it's got a little slot right there. So we're going to plug the smaller one into the back end. You heard it clip in, and the front larger one into the front, if we can get it in there. There you go, you heard that snap in as well. So now these are both connected here, and um, these two holes will line up at the front here, and the back uh, will line up at the back. Now that we have our wires plugged in properly, you, you should make sure that these wires are tucked back inside, so without bending or creasing them too much, you they should already be slightly creased in, and then it kind of sits there uh, like that. And then when you're putting these, this base plate in uh, the, to screw the screws into, um, these screw holes go towards the front. So you're gonna put it in like that with the round circles there, and they go under here, and then it helps if you have an Allen wrench uh, 
um, and you need one to screw this in because the screws are in fact Allen key screws. Um, so this should fit somewhat like that into the hole there. And then you take one of your screws and screw it in with the Allen wrench. And I'm not gonna tighten uh, the one side without getting the other one in. And there we have it. Here we have these two bad boys right here. So get a closer look at those. And you'll feed them in the exact same way with this smaller ring going up and in. And go carefully in there. Here we go. Okay. Again, I'm not gonna screw it in too tightly uh, without getting that second one in. Same thing, I'm not, this doesn't really need to go in any, any specific direction, I believe. If uh, it does spin around, it just prevents it from going any further while you are tightening. So with now the right finger, I'm going to do the same thing, there you go. And while holding it, drop the screw in. Now it's turned itself inside to the side and now we can tighten these things down like so. That's nice and tight. Give it a once over. So, as you can see now, they've given us a set of six of these double-sided tapes, which we attach to these uh, leg extenders. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take the double-sided tape, one side's already sticky, and it should fit quite nicely in there. You see we've got the curved side already that fits right into there. And before you do it, I might even want to go ahead and remove the second side. Put it right on. Make sure it's in there nice and tight. Okay, so now that all four legs are on, here comes the moment we've all been waiting for. I'm gonna flip this bad boy over. Gonna put that battery right in. Flight mode, the landing gear up, and see how it's sitting a little bit taller than uh, we're used to given the leg extensions. Now our camera should fit in there uh, without any risk of touching the ground. So now that we have our landing gear down, we're gonna go ahead and power off the unit because we don't want um, a short circuit. And now it's time to hook up the camera itself. So what I learned last time uh, was that you don't just fit the, um, the gimbal directly into the port because there's this little piece on the back that if you can see it there, um, sort of like a two prong thing and it fits directly into this piece here. And that piece fits in quite simply, but if you didn't know that you wouldn't be able to close when it came time. So that sits directly in there like that and sliding home. All right. Hello, beautiful. So as you can see, uh, we're in focus, but not through the X5. So let's see if we can give it a tap. And there we are.
Well, I'm here for you.